Joining me now, Pulitzer winning Washington Post columnist Eugene Robinson, David Clough, former senior advisor to President Obama, and Democratic strategist Juanita Tolliver. Eugene, your reaction to Mike Pence breaking with Donald Trump? Well, first of all, the whole day just shows just how deranged the Republican Party has become. That you know that it would call January sixth legitimate political discourse, um, and then that it would be big news, and it is big news that Mike Pence would make a simple declarative statement that is the truth. He did not have the right to overturn the election. That's a ridiculous idea. Um, but in the end, Pence had to pick a side. All right, he had to pick. He he, he had to. Tell the truth because Donald Trump was not going to let it go. Um, I think Pence hoped that that Trump would sort of, you know, just let it fly. But but Trump has become more and more strident, and and Pence just had to say something, or it was going to get worse and worse. So he has now made a stand, uh, and we'll see how that works out for him politically. But at least he told the truth. Yeah, David, I, I take Eugene's point. This shouldn't be a big surprise, right? This should be completely normal. And yet it is not. Why is Pence doing this? What impact could it have? Alicia, it is a very low bar, sadly. Um, but I agree with Eugene. He had no option. To the extent he has any political aspirations or future, uh, he couldn't hide in the shadows. He's got to make his case. And I think what's interesting here, uh, I don't want to overstate this, but if you look in the last month, when Senator Rounds from South Dakota stood up to Trump, um, Ron DeSantis is obviously uh, getting deep in Trump's head, uh, not being afraid of him, Mike Pence today. Um, you know, I think what that shows is um, there's a path forward here that doesn't say you have to just genuflect in front of Trump. And we see polls suggesting that while Trump is still deeply popular with the Republican base, over half Republicans uh, are looking for a different candidate. So I think you're going to see more people. You know, in presidential politics, you generally only get one chance to run for president. Some people have proven that otherwise. So for all these people thinking about running, this is their time. And I don't think they're going to stand politely behind Trump. Uh, it is a sad day in American history that one of America's two uh, political parties is basically waved the white flag on democracy. They kind of put a, a period at the end of the sentence. Uh, but I think that's why Pence did it. He's got to go out there and make the case. Uh, and he's been kind of bullied about by Trump and his acolytes. Uh, and I think, you know, just simply saying the truth in Trump's Republican Party counts as courage. Uh, but I think we're going to see more people do it because I think the positioning and the jockeying is starting to get well underway. Juanita, here is more from Pence today. Take a listen. The American people must know, as the Bible says, that we'll keep our oath, even when it hurts. January 6th was a dark day in the history of the United States Capitol. Lives were lost, and many were injured. But whatever the future holds, I know we did our duty that day. If we lose faith in the Constitution, we won't just lose elections. We'll lose our country. Juanita, your thoughts? What's frustrating hearing these excerpts is that Pence fully understands the clear and ongoing threat that Trump is to our democracy, and yet this is the only statement he has. Because what's happening in my mind is that if, you, if this is the only thing you're going to do, then you're still a part of the problem because Pence has not committed to speaking before the select committee. He has not committed to laying out the full court press that Trump put on him to try to overturn the election. He's not going far enough, if you, if you ask me. Honestly, the next step is to stop the conversations with his lawyers and the select committee and stepping forward even further. Because I assure you, any effort that Pence puts forward to holding Trump accountable will probably pay dividends in 2024, not only because Trump would likely be facing criminal charges, uh, but because Republican voters, independent voters, those swing voters will see him as someone who isn't afraid to directly respond to Trump. And I, I think it goes beyond this statement today and more action for preser preserving our democracy is essential. Well, Juanita, to your point about the select committee, your take on the RNC censuring Kinzinger and Cheney for investigating the insurrection. Look, I feel like Kinzinger and Cheney are going to double down on their efforts now. They knew they didn't have the support of the RNC. They knew they didn't have the support of the House conference. And all this is going to do is empower them further, especially when someone like Liz Cheney, who's up for re-election, is raising 1.5 in Q4, 1.5 million opposed to Trump's hand-selected endorsed challenger who only I, did not even break half a million. So I feel like she's going to use this as OK, I'm on the right track. I'm going to make sure that I do everything in my power to get accountability here. Yeah, that money speaks volumes. Eugene, on January 6th, 
the RNC released a statement condemning the attacks, and then today you have them declaring the rioters ordinary citizens engaging in legitimate political discourse. What changed? Um, what changed was that uh, the nothing changed, that Donald Trump retained his hold on the party. And uh, uh, David is right. There have been some signs, and one hesitates even to say it, that, um, that, that, that his grip on the party is perhaps loosening a bit. Um, but still, you know, at least half the party wants him to be the candidate. Um, it, it is it is exceedingly dangerous uh, politically in the Republican Party to directly cross Donald Trump. Mike Pence just, I mean, he he held off for as long as he possibly could. He simply did not have a choice. Uh, and, and and so it, it's not clear to me exactly how this is going to work out politically for the likes of, of Pence, say nothing of Liz Cheney and, uh, and Kinziger, um, they're doing the right thing because they're telling the truth. But, um, uh, you know, I, I, I'm not yet convinced that the Republican Party is returning to sanity. I don't know if it's on that path yet. Well, to that point, David, I don't know if you've gotten a chance to read the entire RNC resolution. For our viewers at home, if you haven't had a chance, it's like a page plus, And it is absolutely batty. I mean, it begins with like a grab bag of their grievances, all of the talking points that we're going to hear for the next six months. And then here's just like one of the internal contradictions that exists in this. It says, quote, the primary mission, the primary mission of the Republican Party is to elect Republicans who support the United States Constitution and share our values. But then, David, it says, quote, Winning back the majority in Congress in 2022 must be the primary goal of the House Republican Conference. There is an inherent contradiction in there. Are they upholding the Constitution or are they winning at all costs? Of course, it's the latter. And this is the thing that frightens all of us who care about democracy, is if they regain power, let's say they win the House and the Senate, make gains in the state, and the 2024 election is close, particularly if Trump wins, they will try and secure power for all time. This is about uh, the uh, gaining and never losing of power. So yeah, of course, there's contradictions through this entire thing, not to mention a lot of these people who are complaining about the 20. Uh, 20 election, one in their own elections. Those were legitimate, <laughs> but they're saying Trump's weren't in the urban areas. Of course, we're at a time now where they don't even hide, uh, you know, the racism uh, or, uh, you know, replacement theories and all these things that are driving so much of their primary politics these days. But yeah, that's their goal here. Uh, and I think that uh, that's the battle within the Republican Party. And right now there's far more primary voters than not who would be just fine. They might not say they support an autocracy, but that's what the RNC is doing. That's what almost all House Republicans are doing, too many Senate Republicans, and certainly the former president. So, um, you know, I think that's where we are, sadly. And that's why the 2022 elections are so critically important, as are the findings of this select committee. Because if you do not punish one coup attempt, you can be sure there'll be another, and it's probably more likely to succeed than the prior one. Juanita, Mitt Romney saying shame falls on the RNC for censuring Cheney and Kinzinger, another GOP senator just reacting by saying, quote, huh, I mean, I I'm going to guess based on your previous answer that you would like to see Mitt Romney really putting himself out there by, you know, supporting voting rights or finding another way in which to actually, you know, be active in his pursuit of democracy. But I do have to ask, it seems like there are a bunch of Republicans who are getting increasingly worried about the direction of their party. Increasingly worried because they know they're going to be enveloped by the formerly fringe candidates who are now becoming the mainstream of the GOP. And that means they lose their standing as long stand long serving Republicans. They don't have the clout that they had in the party. And so I think that's the only thing that Mitt Romney's speaking about now, because as you said, Alicia, he has no intention of doing anything to preserve the state of our democracy, to preserve basic rights for individuals in this country. And so I, I, I see the tweets and I'm like, is that all? Yeah. Is that all? Is that all? You, Eugene, here's the thing. We all have seen all of the same polling, right, where you see Republican voters identifying more with the party than they are identifying with Donald Trump. That is a change that we have seen mm -hmm. in the past yeah. year. It, it's also more complex than the numbers may seem at first glance, right? Some of that is actually about voters who want the party to be more MAGA 
not less. They actually are out trumping Trump. And then part of it's also hard to answer because this is a Republican Party now that has been remade in Trump's image. So they may want Trumpism without Trump. Is his grip on the GOP strengthening or is it weakening? Well, look, it's, it, we don't know yet. Um, but but the, the, the important thing about the Pence announcement is that to, it suggests to me that for, certainly for him and, and coming up for others, Republican officials are going to have to make a choice. They're going to have to choose which side they're on, if either they're on Trump's side or they're on the side of the Constitution. And if, if Trump is, you know, he forced this choice on Mike Pence. Mike Pence didn't want to publicly make the choice, but he had to. Um, I would predict that, that Trump is going to force others, like perhaps Mitt Romney and, and others in the Senate and others, um, in, well, the House is perhaps beyond saving, but other, other Republicans uh, who, who actually do believe in the Constitution uh, to, to, to make a choice and um, uh, that they'd rather not make because it's going to hurt them politically with the base, um, but they may ultimately have no choice.